Show. Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Let me say this. Thanks to French Quarter's guest apartments for being our New York City hotel. That's right. Let them be your headquarters in New York City. Uh, <laughs> headquarters. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Go to FrenchQuartersNY.com to book your next day. FrenchQuartersNewYork.com. French Quarters, the letter N, letter Y. FrenchQuartersNY.com to book your next day. Ladies and gentlemen, on the phone is uh, one of the best in the business. Defensive back for the New England Patriots and uh, a good man. Does a lot of good things with his off time. He's a twin. We have a couple of twins living here. That can be an interesting existence. He's got an interesting perspective on it. But uh, this is a guy uh, that, uh, as good as it gets, and is uh, in his field. The great Devin McCourty from the Pats. What's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing tonight? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. So, uh, what's it like being a Patriot these days, man? Uh, you know, uh, interesting team. Uh, one of the best there is, but uh, lost a couple of big games in the last couple of years to my Giants. Um, uh, are you mad that you can't beat a quarterback uh, like Eli Manning, who, quite frankly, looks like a bit of a mouth breather to me? <laughs> no, I mean, it's a great feeling to be a Patriot. Um, the Giants got us, uh, you know, when I was there one time. So a lot of credit to Eli Manning. He's a great quarterback. But uh, I'm very happy to be a Patriot. No, that's a great organization to work for. I mean, uh, I've actually worked for Mr. Kraft. I did stand-up at his house once uh, for one of his son's surprise birthday parties. And I got to tell you, when you work for that guy, you feel like part of the family. Do you get that sense? Yeah, I mean, every year uh, we get to go out to his house for uh, a nice uh, end of camp celebration. So uh, he's a great owner, and then he's always there. You know, he's in the locker room. He's always around the guy. You can tell he enjoys the team. Um, now, I don't know if you're a big wrestling fan, but one of our correspondents is Andre the Giant, and uh, he's a big fan of yours and the Patriots, and he has a couple of questions he wants to ask you. Andre, ask Devin what you wanted to ask. Devin, big fan, big fan. Devin, have you ever seen Tom Brady make out with Gis Giselle Bunchen? You said, have I ever seen Tom what with Giselle? Repeat the question. Yes, of course. Devin, have you ever seen Tom Brady Making out with Giselle Bungeon. <laughs> nah, I think they keep that behind closed doors. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice if they open the doors every once in a while for that. But, uh, but uh, Andre, that's out of line. Ask a question. Go ahead. Ask well, this is, this is more of a statement. Uh, okay. Devin, do you know that I'm so big that I have to take dumps in hotel bathrooms? Bathtubs? <laughs> No, I mean, that's pretty crazy right there, man. He's such a big guy, he, he takes... He, when he's in a hotel, he has to take a dump in the bathtub. <laughs> Isn't that I hard? Mean, how, do you, how, how do you shower after that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good question, Devin. He doesn't. I go out, I go out to the lobby and, the, uh, and I use the fountain. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's, you can't beat that. Got <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one more question if you want, Ken. Did you ever bang Giselle Bungeon? Oh, that, come on. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, Not a shot. <laughs> <laughs> but, Devin, as a good teammate, as a good teammate, we were talking about this last night during the uh, San Antonio Spurs-Miami Heat game. Uh, of course, uh, w w there's rumors that Tony Parker on the Spurs banged a teammate's wife. You would never do that. No, nah, that's unacceptable. I don't, I don't really believe any of those rumors that get spread out there anyway. Oh, all right. Well, Andre, you, in fact, did hear. Isn't it true that Tony Parker banged your wife, Andre? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, and you caught them? Yes, well, then what are you going to do? I mean, he's a basketball player and he's used to two on ones. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but that is unacceptable. How about the rumor? We choose to believe this is true, though. This is even worse. Delonte West, when they were both on the Cavaliers, banged LeBron James' mother. Did you hear that? Yeah, that, I mean, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that really is... I mean, you've got to have mental problems to do that to a teammate, right? Yeah, that's something else. I wouldn't uh, ever want to go through that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you found out one of your teammates banged your mom, what, what would you do? I don't think it'd be a shot. My mom would probably uh, shoot somebody to even come. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, that's the thing. Your mother would probably never do it, and that's why I don't agree with it. Because I've seen LeBron's mom on TV. She seems too like classy and loving of him to to, to put him through that. You know. I mean, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. All these rumors that get started. You don't know if they're true, if they're false. Right. Well, Andre the Giant. What about the rumors, Andre, that you are in fact uh, gay? 
You know, I, uh, I like to swing from both sides of the plate. Oh, that's nice. Sure. That's very, uh, <laughs> that's very, very sweet of you. Uh, now, uh, my only hope would be it would, uh, that if Tony Parker did bang your wife, it was in a bathtub after you used it. That would be nice. Oh, yes. Then we go to the janitor's closet and clean up in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> How are the Pats going to look this year, uh, Devin? What do you think? You're going to come back? I mean, you guys are always good. Um, uh, how do you think the team's looking this year? Uh, we've been working hard, you know, throughout the OTA. So I think the biggest thing at this time of year, I think we've improved throughout the OTA. So uh, working hard each day. And, you know, I think one thing that we really pride ourselves in is taking it one day at a time and being better in January than we are in September. So, uh, I think for us as a team, we're going to keep working towards that and see what the season brings us. I, a question I'd have, Devin, is, is your Bill Belichick is so well known for kind of isolating uh, teams' weaknesses and exploiting them. How, how does that manifest itself in OTAs when you're playing yourself, when you're playing your own team? Um, it's kind of fun. I think uh, I think Coach Belichick kind of gets to just watch the offense and defense go at it. I don't know uh, how much you know he's in control, but mm. it's always fun to see our two coordinators kind of go at each other and sure. you know do different things to try to get a little bit of an edge. So uh, one thing that you'll see out of Patriots practice is very competitive. Uh -huh. Neither side is giving either side an inch. So we're trying to win every drill and then. I mean, everyone knows how competitive Tom is, so right. the offense is trying to win every drill, too. So it's very intriguing when you come to our practices and, and get to watch that. How do you compare Danny Amendola to Wes Welker in the way the offense is using both guys? Uh, they're both very quick and good receivers, I think. Uh, the biggest thing, I think Danny's different than Wes. You know, he's a, a new player in our system, and I think he's coming and he's learning, and one good thing is you can see right away is his work ethic. Mm -hmm. He comes in every day. He's competing hard in practice. Um, and I think he'll be a, a great addition to our team just because he fits in personality-wise. And I think everyone knows he's already a great player. So you can tell already that he's kind of catching on. There's uh, A lot's been made of the fact that uh, that offense with Tom at the helm places a lot of uh, demands on a receiver as far as assessing what coverages are and, you know, route adjustments and that sort of thing. This is why Chad Johnson was kind of unable to make the switch to playing in a Patriots uniform. Also because he's a jerk-off. Well, maybe that uh, played <laughs> in as well. But but do you see Danny Amendola kind of catching on and, and fitting right in? Yeah, I mean, this seems I mean, it's hard to tell right now. I think God is just going out there and practicing, uh, you know, on both sides of the ball. But... I think, like I said, the biggest thing is his work ethic. He puts in so much time that I think there's no question he'll be able to pick out anything that the offense throws at him. Right. Uh, if, I'm sorry, again. Oh, so, uh, what about, uh, do you see as much two tight end looks, as many two tight end looks with Gronk being out, or is it uh, a lot more uh, Aaron Hernandez and three wide? You no, know, I, mean, I, I mean, that's one thing about uh, our offense. They do it all, so... Uh, any given snap, any given down, you can see, you know, any of those two things you, you named, you can see, you know, uh, a personnel group come on with no no uh, backs on the field or no tight ends. So mm -hmm. uh, we always have a lot of versatility, and especially in practice, we use it all. Okay. Uh, real quick, uh, before we get to this uh, 5K run you and your brother do, which is for a great cause, I'm sorry, but Andre the Giant has one more question. Andre, promise to be good about this. Go ahead, Andre. Did you ever catch Bill Belichick banging Giselle Bunsen? Oh, come on. <laughs> never, never, ever. <laughs> that would be a horrendous... What'd you say? You don't see those things at all, not in the Patriots argument. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a really disturbing sight to see Belichick banging Giselle Bunchen, don't you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't really want to see any of my teammates banging anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Well, listen, uh, talk to us a little bit about this uh, this run you do with your brother. You have a twin brother, and uh, you guys uh, have this 5K run. Explain what this is. Yeah, I have a, uh, a lesser twin brother, Jason, that plays for the Tennessee Titans. Um, our, our, and our uncle actually have the sickle cell disease, so 
it was something that, you know, we went through as kids, uh, just seeing them struggle. So uh, we were very close. To, we're very close to my aunt. So it was something we wanted to give back. So we met with Embrace Foundation, Embrace Kids Foundation, and, you know, they were looking for someone to spearhead kind of their sickle cell drive. So uh, we had a blood drive in February, and now on Sunday we'll be having our first ever 5K walk to uh, raise money for sickle cell awareness and help kids uh, with scholarship funds and help families that kids uh, deal with this disease. So I think it'll be very beneficial just to raise awareness and get people out for a good time and, and to see something to help other people out. Well, it's great that you do that, man. It really is. What is it like growing up with a twin brother? You guys are twins. You both get into football. It's so hard for one person to make the NFL, and then two of you do it. How special is that? you got to have a proud family. Yeah, I mean, uh, with a single mom, she's so proud. Uh, That's great. And I think for us, we never really thought of one of us making it. So it wasn't until, you know, we both kind of got established that now we're able to kind of look back and and realize how special it is and try to take advantage of the opportunity. But growing up, we never, ever envisioned only one of us making it. We always push each other to both get to the top of the what if what, what would uh, it have been like if one of you made it and one didn't? Would you think there would have been trouble there? Like, uh, 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 you think the other one would have went off the deep end maybe and been depressed? Or how do you think you would have handled that? No, I, I know if it was me and he would have made it, then I would have just lived with him and I would have probably mooched off him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The other guy might have had a better existence. Yeah, why not? I mean, if your twin brother makes it, that's basically like you making it. I could have went out at him and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Andre, you, Andre, no, not a lot of people. Andre is a twin, and his uh, his twin didn't make it in wrestling. And Andre, uh, he he actually got very very jealous of you, right? And there was uh, he tried to kill you or something. What happened? Yes, uh, I was asleep one night and he sat on my face. It was horrible. <laughs> oh my God. The ambulance came. It was the whole thing. He sat on your face. Yes, <laughs> I was. Uh, that's not, that's that's not a good twin relationship right there. <laughs> we were roughhousing. We were roughhousing. You were roughhousing. Yeah. Now, you, when you did one summer, you spurred up eight feet, and he stayed normal. And I, well, that was kind of odd, right? Yeah, so when he sat on my face, I thought the cat was on my face. Oh! <laughs> now, did the cat, was the cat sitting on your face quite a bit at that time? Oh, no, here and there, you know, little this, little that, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Devin, listen, it's great that you do that. You're coming back. Uh, how, do, how does the team look? How does how does Brady look? Everybody look healthy? Yeah, I mean, like I said, everyone's working hard, and uh, it's a good time this point in the year just to go out there and start establishing new relationships, getting to know new teammates, and, and, and working on communication and, and bonding together. How can you Can you name five people that you've met in your life that, that are actually dumber than Rob Gronkowski? <laughs> See, people really think you're in Kowski, but he's really, he's not dumb. Well, that's what I mean. I so mean, it must be easy to name five people dumber. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to put them out there on the radio. <laughs> okay. like, that's not fair. All right. No, but Gr Gronk is what you're saying. He's smarter than people think. I mean, just think about how hard our offense is, and, and people always talk about people can't uh, pick it up and, and be able to just jump into it. This guy's had success ever since he's been in New England, so I think that yeah. speaks volumes of just his knowledge and able to translate yeah. the playbook and what he learns uh, in the meeting rooms and off film. And I mean, I don't think there's a tight end in the game that brings it to the field better than he does. You're right. I mean, uh, that in the case that he's smart, and then on the, the same night he, he tweets out a picture of him in a rubber suit with a porn star. It's my screensaver. <laughs> <laughs> he, likes to, he likes to have a good time, man. Uh, why not? No, you're right. I, I, I say this about football players all the time. I was just telling you know, my co-host John here was in the NFL for seven years. You guys are underrated as intellects. It is hard to learn a playbook in the NFL. It is insane. I mean, I tried ninth, tenth grade. I played. I couldn't do it. I was failing every class on the planet. So I do. I, I, I give you guys credit. And and on the defense, like you play, you got to react to it. You got it's it's improv. You know, it's it's very difficult. I give you props. Yeah, it's crazy. Appreciate that. Kind of comes second nature once you're playing for a while. Right. Well, uh, who do you think? Uh, who do you think is going to be your biggest uh, biggest matchup in your division this year? Do you think the Jets are ever going to get it together and and be a team that may uh, give you some give a little bit a little, a little bit of a hassle? 
I don't know. It's always tough when we play the Jets. I mean, the first game we played them, it went to overtime, and that game easily could have went the other way with them winning it. So um, I think it's the whole Boston-New York rivalry that I think both teams look forward to those two games year in and year out. So right. uh, that's always a tough matchup. But uh, our division, I mean, it's, all, it's tough every year. I mean, two years ago, Buffalo beat us in Buffalo, so – I mean, we always got to come ready to play in our division, no matter what records are or, or anything. So I think the AFC East is always a tough and, and competitive division. Yeah, we just said, okay, one more question from John, and we'll let you go. Go ahead, John. Hey, Devin, did any of the draft picks impress you in that first minicamp? Um, I, I would say they all, all kind of impress you, just because the simple fact that you being a rookie before and seeing those guys coming and waking up early to go to extra meetings and having to come out there on the field. So, you know, me, bias, of course, my Rutgers guys impressed me mm-hmm. uh, for sure with all those guys out there uh, picking up the scheme and going out there and making some plays. Yeah, no, I know. What do you think about what's going on with Rutgers, man? Uh, crazy times over there. Very crazy times. I, I, um, it's almost hard to follow, especially when you're in the locker room with a a bunch of different guys repping their own universities. Uh, I hear it all the time, but uh, I have faith that they'll work it out somehow. I mean, I support them 100%. I don't know much what's going on other than what I see on the TV, but I'm sure they'll work it out somehow. I, I happen to love Tim Pernetti. Do you like Pernetti? Oh, uh, yeah, Tim Pernetti's my guy, man. Uh, I still talk to him to this day, and... Uh, the relationship we formed uh, before he was athletic director, just coming around Rutgers, and then after he became the AD, uh, I'll always talk to him, and he'll always be a good friend of mine. That's great. I agree. Tim's a good guy. Real quick, uh, before we go, just explain exactly uh, the name and uh, and how we find and everything going on with the 5K walk. Go ahead. Okay, so it's tagglesiglesell.org. You can log on to that. It's not too late to sign up and register. You can uh, sign up and donate any amount that you want. Uh, it's at Liberty Park in uh, Jersey City on Sunday. Starting at 10 a.m., we'll start the walk. So come earlier if you want to register. And uh, Artie, are, are we going to see you and Andre the Giant and Johnny there? <laughs> i tell you what. I'm going to try to. I think if I tried to walk even 2K, I might have a heart attack. But maybe I can get Andre's back. I, you know, I appreciate the invite, and it's a good cause. I will try. But uh, in any case, good luck with it. Andre, would you like to apologize to Devin? I'm so very sorry. <laughs> I'm so uh, sorry. It's all right, man. i come on Sunday and try to win the race, you're cool with me. <laughs> All right, Dev. All right, well, good luck with everything, man. Good luck with the season. Stay safe and uh, continued success, brother. Uh, uh, thank you. All right, the great Dev McCourty. Good sense of humor. Good guy.